Welcome to another broadcast from Evangel Worship Center in Mariana, Florida. Our service times are Sundays at 9.30 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and our office is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. For more information about our church, visit our website at evangelonline.net or call 850-526-2232.
will stop for everyone But the new day has begun Something you shout about Let it be This power in this day, come on that freedom day. Let it be known I got sex, I got rings. We lift you up, up. Let it be known love has come, love has won. We lift you up, 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 up. Let it be known, let it be known that our God makes our God rose to the throne. Let it be known that everybody. Oh, oh, oh. 
so aimless, I feel the sin. I would have dared not to say the real. Jesus came like a string in the night. Praise the Lord. So I hit the shower Gotta be at the job in less than an hour Sure it gets a smell test Make sure it's got a collar Pack up my lunch Cause I only got a dollar Healthy breakfast for the kids Oops, change my shirt Picky waves for all Then it's off to work U-turn, U-turn Coming back for a minute Left my briefcase in the closet And there's paperwork in it Now I'm sitting in traffic This commute perturbs Why'd I get a job downtown And buy a house in the burbs? I pull into the lot Got my coffee, I'm ready Keep eyes down down casket past chatty betty sit down at my desk now i'm ready to go man i may not be the boss or the ceo but there's a couple of things that i think you ought to know i'll only surf the web for a minute or so and i won't complain if the internet is slow because when you hired me man you hired a pro i gotta get that bacon and bring it home bring it this home. desk chair is as good as a throne nose to the grindstone with my fingers to the bone watch me work it out memo says i'm in the zone i'm May not be the MVP, but I work well with others, even Grumpy Steve. Grumpy Stop Steve. by my cubicle, and I think you'll agree, there's no one up in here working harder than me. Grousing, griping, I guess I could be grumbling. The job ain't always fun, there's people always bumbling. The only thing jamming some days is the printer. They keep it so cold up in here, it's always winter. Burnt the popcorn again, the smell fills the building. Overlap or near, but hey man, I'm chilling as I calmly reload. The paper in the copier, 10th time today. These peeps can't be much sloppier. Meetings, meetings, these things can be a beating. The same things over and over, repeating. But I'm listening well with my paper and pen. Good eye contact, keep the doodles to a minimum. Whatever they throw at me, I'll handle it. Computer stops working again, I dismantle it. Cause I'm a team player, I think outside the square. I don't raise the roof, I raise the value of our shares. When my task list stack into the ozone layer, it may take some work. Colleague, I ain't scared, watch out. I'm shutting down solitaire. Get down, step back, about to get busy up in here. Won't catch me slacking, just check that flag. Check that I'm flag. from the office and that's a fact. One time I took a stapler, but I brought it back. I'm working real hard, making sure we're in the black. If you work hard, you're just like me. Facebook and Twitter rarely on your screen. Ain't got no fortune like a king or a queen. Gotta take care of business, gotta make that green. Make that green. Can you uh, fill those out for me in triplicate? Thanks. Sure. I'd like a raise in a promotion, a 401k. That's bigger than the ocean, less taken out for health and dental. A supervisor who's less temperamental. 
But I'm working and that's nothing to complain about It could be worse, I could be getting all my teeth pulled out A taste tester at a farm that grows Brussels sprouts Or like the cartoon, making sure that no duds go out So if you're with me, throw your business card into the sky If you don't have one, look around, grab off and supply But nothing heavy, this is parade confetti Gotta work it thick, that's steady, boy, then you have one already oh! Trying to break like a Kit Kat Water cooler, stretch the legs, have a chit chat Working harder, hardly working, ask me which is we Hold up, the boss is coming through the business Today we're going to be talking about your mission is your workplace. Your mission is the place that God has taken you to. You may be a owner of a company. You may be a person that is an office manager. You may be the person that makes sure everything happens in the office so the boss looks good in all of those areas. So we may be those type people wherever you're at. You know, sometimes we think we got it rough at work. Sometimes we think, you know, our job's going to kill us in a lot of areas. But I found something the other day, and it is an actual work insurance report. came from Australia, and I remember reading this years ago, and so I went back and done some checking, and I found it again. And it is almost like our, our injury form, you know, that we have to fill out whenever we get injured at work. But this guy gives us a new perspective on we don't have it bad. Listen to this says, this is a bricklayer's accident report which was printed in the newsletter of the Australian equivalent of the Workers' Compensation Board. This is a true story. Dear sir, I'm writing in response to your request for additional information in block three of the accident report form. I put poor planning as the cause of my accident and you asked for a fuller explanation and I trust the following details will be sufficient. I am a bricklayer by trade. On the day of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a six-story building. When I completed my work, I found that I had some bricks left over, which weighed later were found to be slightly in excess of 500 pounds. Rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel by using a pulley which was attached to the side of the building on the sixth floor. Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof and swung the barrel out and loaded the bricks into it. Then I went down to untie the rope, holding it tightly to ensure the slow descent of the bricks. You will note in block 11 of the accident report form that I weigh 175 pounds. <laughs> Due to my surprise at being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a rapid rate up the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel, which was now proceeding downward at an equally impressive speed. This explains the fractured skull, minor abrasions to the broken collarbone, and listed in section three of the accident report, you will find more. Slowed only slightly, I continued my rapid ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand were two knuckles deep into the pulley. Fortunately, by this time, I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope, in spite of being in an extreme amount of pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom fell out of the barrel. Now, devoid of the weight of the bricks, that barrel weighed approximately 50 pounds. I, have, I again refer you to my weight in section 3 of my report. As you can imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor again, I met the barrel coming up. This accounts for the two fractured ankles, broken tooth, and several lacerations to my leg and lower body. Here, my luck began to change slightly. The encounter with the barrel seemed to slow me enough to lessen my injuries, and when I fell into the pile of bricks, I fortunately only cracked three vertebrae. I'm sorry to report, however, as I lay there on the pile of bricks in pain, unable to move, I again lost my composure and presence of mind and let go of the rope. 
I lay there watching the empty barrel begin its journey back down onto me, which at this time explains the two broken legs. I hope this answers your inquiry. How many of you ever thought work's going to kill you? Not like this guy. You see, all of us at some point in time have wondered, why do I have to work? You know, why have I got to get up every morning? Why can't I be born into a rich family where all I have to do is go out and pick out which car I want to drive, to onto which house I'm going to go, whether I'm going to go to the lake, whether I'm going to go to the beach, whether I'm going to go to the mountains, whether I'm going to go to Tahoe, wherever I'm going to go to. We all at times have thought, this is crazy, getting up every morning to do the same thing over and over again. Make the lunches, get out, go to work, only to get there, things are going wrong, stuff is broken down, all of this. I mean, we all get to that point. We all get to that place where we're like, will this ever really be over? We look forward to retirement to find out that only the governmental system has backed up what it takes to really be able to retire. And now you're looking at the age of 80 being able to retire. I've already looked at the platform and figured out where I'm going to put my chairlift <laughs> so that I can get my walker with the tennis balls up here to speak to you and hope that my teeth will stay in as I do so. <laughs> you see, we all find ourselves in that place of wondering, will this ever end? But today I want to talk to you about what it means to really see your workplace as a mission. To really think about and focus on what does it mean for me to go to work every day and what does it mean for me to be a witness to the people that I come in contact with every day. And it doesn't matter what type of job you're in, what status your job is, all of you have a mission field. I told our students yesterday as I was speaking to them, I said, you know, here's the reality, guys. The adult right to be able to come into the school and minister to you and pray over you, even at events that is off-site, is gone. It's gone. I talked with an attorney a couple of weeks ago about this issue. And his statement to me was, Pastor, the days of the adults are over. It's the days of the students. And I talked to the students about being a witness in their school. And I challenge you, if you have a student that is at Laguna, that you talk to them. Hey, I understand that they were talking to you about being a follower of Christ and not a fan of Christ. If you've not read Kyle Eidelman's book, uh, uh, Not a Fan, you need to read that book. It will, it'll shake you up. We talked about the fact that what would it look like if one of those students or a couple of those students before a game, before a cheer event, before a soccer match, before a band rehearsal, before a flag team rehearsal, before any of those things... If they said, hey, does anybody have something they need prayer about? And they begin to pray. We no longer have a society that is Christ-friendly. Your rights as a Christian now are becoming the minority. And what we have to do is now we have to say, okay... We are losing some of our religious freedoms. We are losing those things at a rapid pace. So how is the gospel going to, to be just sent out in our community if no longer the impact of, of coming to church, of, of, of events uh, with church-related uh, all of those things. How? Because it used to be that all of the witnessing was done in the church. That's, that's how you got them. But now that doesn't happen. So how are we going to get the gospel out there? We get it out in our workplace. We get it out by living a life that says, like Paul did, follow me as I follow Christ. That, that's the reality of it. If we went today... And we gave the people that you work with a scale of 1 to 10. And we said, we just want you to rank this individual on one area. One area. And that is this. 
Do you see them as a Christ follower in the workplace? That's the only question. Do you see them as a Christ follower in the workplace? Where do you think you would rate? You see, that's, that's the reality of this. The reality is that Christ teaches us in his word. He says this in Colossians 3 and verse number 23. He says, whatever you do, everyone say that first part, whatever you do. That sounds like whatever, doesn't it? It's pretty much everything. He says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Wow. You see, I believe that Christ followers should be the best employees and the best bosses there is anywhere. I believe that. I believe that we should give fair work for the hours that we're asked to serve. Well, pastor, they don't take care of me right. That's between them and God. The question is, how does God view you as a disciple in your workplace? Now, I know we all lose it every once in a while. I know, you know, and I know I may be talking to another group of people, but we all lose it at times. But here's the reality, or here's the question that we have to ask ourselves. When we lose it, what do we do about it? When we, when, we, when we lose it and we say some things we shouldn't say or we act some ways we shouldn't act, what do we do about it? Do we just go, well, they'll forget it? Can I tell you, as a Christ follower, it's, it's a little bit different because they view you, whether you want to believe this or not, in a different spectrum. Because... Christians have a bad rap because of the way that they act in their workplace. Christians have a lot of times a bad rap because they view us as one way on Sunday, beginning at 9.30, ending at about 11, 11 11.15, then starting back maybe on Wednesday night, that's how... That's how we want to be seen. But the reality is that the people that know you best know your relationship with Christ, and that is your family and the people you work with. Because here's the kicker. You actually probably spend more time with the people you work with than your family. That's true. We're going to be doing a a session not not long from now. We're going to allow you to gauge yourself in, in four different areas of your life as far as your family, as far as those types of things, helping you bring balance to some things. You see, we must be about the Father's business. So the question comes, do we have a work mentality and a church mentality? Do we have a mentality that says, when I put on, when I put on, when I put on my word church, this is who I am. Good morning. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. When we're at church, man, I've got this tough thing. Oh, I'll pray for you. God answers prayer. And we believe that. But when we get to work, my God, can anybody do anything right around here? Bunch of imbeciles can't do anything. Or you may not take it to that level, but your attitude, everybody's going, ooh, don't, mm mm. They ain't had their meds today. <laughs> Go ahead, you know it's true. You see, I want us to take this stool today, and I want this to be your workplace. You may sit, you may stand, you may walk in different areas. 
But every time you walk into a building with the name Christian attached to you, people say, can I trust them? Can I trust them? Because trust is something that has been lost in our society. And people are looking for people that they can trust. They're looking for people that when they say, I'll pray for you, they really mean it. They're going to come back and check on them. They're going to find out what's going on. You see, the Bible tells us that no matter where we're at in our work environment, we should work with all diligence. In the book of, of Matthew, he tells us the harvest is great. The harvest is great. The problem is not with the harvest. The, the problem in the situation arises with the workers to harvest the harvest. I was so proud of Jackson County whenever I saw on the paper all the farmers coming together. I think it was last Sunday. Was that correct? I think it was last Sunday or the Sunday before last to come together for a, a man, I forgot his name, that was having some, some physical difficulties and everything. And all of these farmers got together. And on a Sunday, they all came out there. And all you could see in the field was, was harvesting equipment. Harvesting his crops because he couldn't do it. And that was the livelihood for his family. These same farmers are getting ready to come back and help with the next crop. Because they realize this man can't do it. I thought to myself, man, I wished I'd have known about that sooner. Because we would have went out there and we would have fed everybody that was out there working. I wished I could have, I could have found out. About, and I'm going to try and find out when they're doing it again. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to show up in force. And we're going to do whatever we can to help take care of them. Because that, that's about showing people you care about them in the environment that they're in. What if you found out, just, let's, let's just think for a moment. Let's go back to our work. What if you just found out that someone was having trouble with one of their kids? What if you wrote them a handwritten note? And you said, today I want you to know I'm praying for you. If you ever need anything, know I can be trusted. What would that do for somebody? But you see, so many times we get so wrapped up in the 9 to 5 or the, the 8 to 5 or the 7 to 4 or the midnights to whenever, shift work and all of that type stuff. I understand. I've done shift work before. It, it's a killer. It's a killer. But what if in our, in our work environment that we ask, what can I do today to impact somebody's life in a positive way? What if we were able to work. The Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all of your might, with all of your strength. Well, pastor, all I do is sweep the floors. Then sweep those floors and sing a song to Jesus. There's a lady that works at the hospital I don't know her. She does some cleaning. But I can almost guarantee you that woman's a Christian. Because every time I walk by her, that woman has a smile on her face. And she's doing, you know what I do? I make a point. When I walk by her, I say, you do a great job. You do a great job. What if we went to a restaurant? And yeah, we got some bad service. Do, but do we know what's going on in the kitchen? Do we know if the manager ordered enough baked beans? Or if they're having to wait till some more got cooked? What if we asked, or whenever we started to leave, we looked at that waitress who looked like she was frazzled. 
And we looked at her and said, I want you to know, I know it's a tough day for you, and I'm praying for you. What if we left a little extra tip for that girl? And maybe a little note that says, God loves you. The work environment. What if we did things outside of the norm of everybody else? But you know, I think that's what we're supposed to do. Because we are followers of Christ. We must be different than others are. We must, we must portray Christ in a way that other people don't normally see him. You see, in 1 Corinthians, there's a passage and it says this. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 8, it says, And every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Wow. You mean God's judging me on my workplace attitude? God's taking notes today. Yeah. And that's all he says by it. Yeah. Not his best. We all are there. We all, I know we've all had bad days. I know y'all don't understand, y'all don't believe this, but I've had a bad day before. No, you're not supposed to amen that now. No, I'm kidding. We've all had bad days. There are days when it looks like everything is going wrong. I walked in today and, and, and someone said, you know, hey, we got a cable missing from, from this. Do you know where it went to? No. Last week, someone decided they needed our pressure washer better than we, more than we needed it out under the pole barn. Um, the, the, today, and then, and then, of course, this is stuff you got to know. You know, hey, there's an air conditioner down next door, and I'm going, that's great. I need to go in and go, hey, somebody's got God's money. Give it up. You see, we all have these things that, that weigh us down, that get us. But here's what I want to tell you today. You are better than your environment. You're better than your environment. You don't need to let your, your, your environment dictate your attitude. You need to allow your attitude to dictate your environment. I'm going to say that again. You don't need to allow your environment to dictate your attitude. You need to allow your attitude to dictate your environment. That can work at home. That can work at work and all these places. Because our work is where we spend the majority of our time. What if when we walked up to work, and someone was having a rough day. They said, I can't wait until Jeremy or Ashley get here. I can't wait because I'm going to ask them to pray for me because I know they know how to pray. Wow. That would change the whole course of things. That would change everything about it. What if, as an employer, what if, as a business owner, we set the precedence that every day before work started, we were going to walk in the door and we were going to pray? You can't, I know some places, again, it's up. It's a society where everything is turning against us. But what if you walked in, and how many of you know, I heard someone say this the other day, they may tell me that I can't pray openly in the school, but they can't tell me I can't pray in the school. Because when I walk in there and I have to do something for my daughter or something, you know what I do? I walk in and I go, this is the place of God. This is the place where God dwells. This is the place of the Spirit of God. This is the place where light prevails over darkness. This is the place where God lives. They may not allow me to pray openly, but they cannot ever stop me from praying. 
And the Bible tells me the prayers of the righteous availeth much. He didn't say the loud prayers of the righteous avail much. And only if they can hear you does it avail much. He just said the prayers of the righteous avail much. What if we took authority over the environment in our workplace whenever we walked in every day? If you were having a bad day, say, Father, first of all, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, spirit, and body. Today, I declare I shall be a witness of the power of God in this place. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper, and every tongue that tries to rise against me in defeat is going to fall in utter defeat. What if I did that? You see, I believe, and I know, guys, you're having to keep up with me on notes because I'm jumping around. You see, Maxwell says this, our attitude determines our altitude. Our attitude determines our altitude. There's a bunch of buzzards out there that you can live with. But there's not many eagles that are flying. And an eagle finds food that it needs for the day. A buzzard eats whatever is dead and left. There's a whole message right there. If an eagle needs fish, it goes and finds fish. If its system needs it. If it needs meat, it'll go and find a squirrel. It'll go and find something else. A buzzard eats Whatever is left and dead on the side of the road. Are you ready? You need to choose what you're going to eat spiritually during the day at your work environment. Don't eat what others have left. Wow. Wow. Because what others leave trying to suck you in. How many of you know people that are life suckers? They just suck the life right out of you. And they want to leave. They want to get you involved in their little stuff going on. You know so and so. (laughs) Do you know what they said the other day? My land. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. i tell you. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to eat, get you to eat what's dead. Because there is no life in that. Listen to me. They're trying to get you to eat what's dead because there is no life in that. But as a Christ follower, I set the tone for my environment. I set the tone for my. So when they start that, you know what they did this past week? Did you know they were this? Did you know they were sleeping with so-and-so? Did you know they were this? My Lord. If they started that about the first time they went, did you know? I want you to go, whoo. Join hands. Let's pray for them, that God will bless them. You just, boom, you just shut it up. You need to be a peacemaker instead of a peacekeeper. There's a difference. A peacekeeper will take that stuff in and go, well, I'm just not going to say anything about it. You need to be a peacemaker, which changes that environment. I make it change. I make something Here's three things real quick. Uh, What does a good work ethic do for you in the kingdom? Number one, it gives integrity. It gives integrity to you. People know they can look to you when things are rough. They know they can go to you and they can trust you. Pastor, I got, man, I got problems of my own. Ain't you glad Jesus didn't say that when he was on the cross? Y'all don't bother me. I got problems of my own right here. Y'all don't, don't bother me. I got my own cross to carry. Y'all just, my Lord, take care of your own. I'm glad Jesus didn't do that. It brings integrity. Number two, it brings inspiration. You inspire other people. What is different about you? Well, I can tell you what's different about me. I have Jesus Christ in my life. 
And just because I have Christ in my life doesn't mean that I will never have problems, but I have a different way to take care of my problems. It, it inspires other people. And the last thing is it brings increase to you. It brings increase to you. Can I tell you this? Whenever you allow God to work through you, you will increase in ways that you never thought you would. You will gain favor with God and with people. You will gain favor with God and with people. You see, the Bible tells us again, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. I can't store up, well, what am I going to get out of this? Probably nothing. I think sometimes if we, if we looked at ourselves and we kept reminding ourselves, I'm not working for here. I'm working for there. I'm, I'm doing this because Christ gave me a job. And if Christ gave you something, then you need to do it with an attitude and an excellence that brings glory to Christ for what Christ did for you. Well, Pastor, I don't like this job. Really? You want to walk the street? Well, they don't pay me enough. You got a job. You got a job. There, there's people out there every day that we're getting phone calls in. They're, I ain't got no work. I ain't got this and I ain't got that. And I, we found one person. We, help, we tried to help them get them off the street and everything else. And you know what? They chose the street over help. So what do we do? We go, okay. Well, pastor, you mean y'all didn't just go, come on, you really got to do this. No, until a person decides what they want to do. They're going to do what they want to do. You see, God is calling us to be a person of integrity in the workplace. In the workplace. Whatever you do, do it with all of your heart. Well, pastor, my boss is as mean as the devil. Are you ready? The devil's already been defeated. And if he's as mean as the devil, then if the devil is already under Christ's feet, then you can pray for that individual because the authority and the power that is in you is greater than the authority and the power that is in them in the spiritual realm. It doesn't mean to get cocky with them because you'll be on the street. You are to give honor to those in places of authority. I may not like what's going on, but I've got to give honor to those in places of authority. So I pray for them that God will do something in them. But until then, I work for the wage and the time that God has blessed me with. It kind of sounds like a parable that's in Scripture. And if you want to go back, you can look it up. It's in, we're not going to read it today. I had it here. But it's in Matthew chapter number 20, verse 1 through 16. It talks about, about a man who came out. And these people wanted a contract whenever they started working that day. They said the wage back then was a penny a day. Okay, a penny a day. And they said, you know what? We want to know we're going to get paid at the end of the day. So we, we'll start here, but you owe us a penny at the end of the day. And he goes, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll pay you your penny. But then there were some other people as the day went along. He realized he needed some other people. And then at the end, towards the end of the day, he hired on these other people also. Well, when it come time for the end of the day for pay to go out, he paid the people that he hired at the beginning or at the end of the day first so that the people who were hired at the beginning of the day that wanted the contract, that wanted to know, okay, I want to know exactly what I get and I want to know this and I want to know all of this type of stuff. He looked at them and he, hired, he paid the people that he hired last, which some of them came on at 3 o'clock and they still got a penny. And the people who came on at the beginning, they were kind of ticked. They go, what's up? This guy, we just, uh, you paid him the same amount you're going to do us? He goes, look, it doesn't matter what they get. It's not about you. 
You were hired on for this wage. Work for that wage. You were hired on for this wage. You work for that wage. Listen to me. If you work the wages a lot of times and the benefits will follow you. Well, pastor, I've been there 15 years. I ain't got no raise. I'm not talking about money all the time. The problem is we equate everything in our society to dollars and cents. In the spiritual realm, we have to say, but I've had a job for 15 years. There are some people who don't have that. I've had this. My workplace, Lance or somebody, if I can get you to come. My workplace defines a lot of who I am. What's going on? And I know, I know we've got a lot of people that work in environments that are, are rough. I, I understand that. I understand that sometimes things get out of control. I understand that. I'm not saying that everybody is going to be a 10 every day. I'm not saying that you're even sometimes going to make it to a 2. Because everybody got bad days. But here's what I am saying. Consistency. When you have a bad day, just admit it. Having a rough time today. Because even Christ prayed and said, Father, could you let this, could you let this pass by me? Could you let me get out of this? But he said also in the same breath, not my will, but yours be done. You need to ask God, how how can I be more effective in my workplace tomorrow? When I walk into my work, when I walk in and I sit down tomorrow, or I walk in and I punch in, or I walk in and say, I'm here. How at the end of that day, in an environment that you spend more time with than you do your family, how have I been a witness for Christ? Because my mission is that I'm a disciple. My mission is that I'm a follower of Christ. My mission is that every day I need to try and find somebody that I can speak life into about Christ. That workplace is my mission field. I asked the students yesterday, I said, what's the difference between being a disciple and being a missionary? Because you see, we think being a missionary is going somewhere else. And we think being a disciple is what we do. Being a missionary can be at your workplace. Being a missionary can be where you're at every day. I don't care what type of work you do. Again, I don't know that lady's name at the hospital. But every time I walk in there, I may be real busy. I may be going from place to place and everything like that. But when I see her, there's something about her that just clicks with me. And I'm like, that lady got to be a Christian. You will be known by the type of fruit that is on your tree. And the question is, are you supplying fruit for people who at this point are fruitless? Because they don't know Christ. Because they don't know Him. You must provide the environment by which they can eat of the spiritual things. Well, pastor, they are heathen. I think they's the devil's child. They just meaner than mean. Great mission field for you. Great mission field for you. Because if I'm right... Some of the greatest apostles, some of the greatest missionaries, some of the greatest people of this age were sent to people who were heathens. They were heathens. I'll close with this. Stories told about a missionary who went to a a place and he was trying to witness and it it was a rough, rough time. 
And it got so bad that they actually killed the missionary. And they threw his body into the river. And his body was eaten by crocodiles. The story goes on and it says that some years later another missionary came and they were trying to witness to this group of people and, and it wasn't going real well. And actually, they were trying to figure out a way that they could get in here and they, someone mentioned the missionary's name of some years back. And they went back and they did some checking. And the story or the, 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 um, the rules or the guidelines of that group of people was that if anybody's blood ran through the river, that whoever they were, they would have to listen to someone from that family. Come to find out, it was one of those family members that his relative was a missionary and got killed in that, in that region. And they came and they said, hey, we understand that so-and-so years back was killed and his body was thrown into the river. And they said, well, yeah. And they said, well, your treaty says that the blood of whoever flows in that river, you'll have to listen to them. And he said, I am a relative here. And they sat back and they were able to say, talk about Christ, talk about God, all these things. And it came and finally the guy that was the head of this group of people, he came out and he said, here's the deal, guys. The blood of this man flows in the river. His God will be our God. The blood of Jesus Christ flows through each and every one of us. Through each and every one of us. It is because of his blood that we are who we are. And today you need to go out because a man gave his life on Calvary. Hanging between two thieves. One denied him. One went to be with him that day. Every day you're placed in between people. People who may know Christ and people who may not. But the blood of Jesus Christ flows through you and you can have an impact on those people that you come in contact with every day. Everyone may not follow. But what if one does? What if one does? The question is, what will you do with the one? What will you do about the one? Thank you.